nicknamed the graph and set a category to make it uh, searchable for the filters to find it. Connect your graph to a simple output node with uh, no usage items. Just a label and identifier. Publish to the your own library folder. Click save. You will soon find it within your library browser. I think the best way to learn is by looking into existing nodes and you can do this by um, uh, right clicking any node and open reference, reference. You can see the white noise node is made by a simple FX map which makes a simple pattern and it's um, put into a lot of transformed 2D nodes uh, into blend nodes which uh, blend them in different ways and uh, at the end there's just a output node so uh, we can um, take some inspiration from this uh, you, don't, you don't have to use a FX node but that's what I like to do but uh, you can um, just you can just take any existing noise maps here if you want to and connect them and put them into the output and uh, that will be fine but I like to uh, use FX maps to get some um, sense of uniqueness uh, so uh, click the output node and uh, remove the usage item and uh, let's remove the group uh, name here and uh, we'll name this properly later so uh, I'm gonna go into the FX map if you uh, just want to make your own simpler uh, graph that's fine you can skip the part of the video and uh, so but if you want to learn about the FX map you can watch on for a while it's gonna. It's not gonna take long. So to edit edit a FX map, you just uh, right click and choose Edit FX Map or Control E. You will be met with a quadrant node. Uh, all it really does is uh, split your uh, your uh, texture uh, into four parts. So if I, for instance, copy this Control D and uh, put a pattern on this, let's put a square, and I connect it to this part. You will notice uh, the square will only fill in this part of the of the texture. That's because each pin represents each square uh, on the texture. So uh, it's a nice habit to uh, click the FX map and set it to grayscale, so you get a black background. And uh, you know, if I connect the, this to this one, you can guess that uh, it will fill in this part. And uh, quadrants, you can make uh, quadrants within quadrants within quadrants. So if I connect uh, this quadrant to this part, you will notice that uh, it will come a square will uh, be generated here and also here. So uh, we can imagine you can make some really interesting. Uh, it's really simple, but you can make some really interesting uh, texture this way. It's really simple, but it's uh, very, very powerful. So, uh, what I like to use is uh, waves, the waves pattern. Let's connect all of these. Uh, I've made some really interesting patterns with the waves before. So, uh, let's just continue using that one. And... Um, We can adjust the height of the pattern to make it stretch across the texture. We can pull in the width. Uh, but it would, it would be nice to, uh, like this is really uniform and symmetrical. If we want some randomness, we can utilize the offset pattern. Uh, we need to introduce another node. Let's introduce the iterate node. And the iterate node basically uh, you need to set it as uh, as root, and uh, the root basically tells this is where uh, the graph starts, and it will move downwards uh, through the graph. So if I increase iteration, that basically means that uh, it goes up to the top again and goes down the graph five times. And as you can see, you can obviously ob you can easily see that. Um, it has uh, stacked a lot of the, you know, the, the texture has been stacked on top of each other many times. So uh, we need we need to offset uh, the pattern for each iteration. We can do this by uh, we can 
you say method that uh, Wes from Substance uh, used, which uh, I think it's really effective. So uh, if you find a random node, we can basically generate a random number for each iteration. So what a random node does is uh, basically it finds a random value between 0 and the value that you have hooked up into it. So between 0 and 1 it will find a random value for each of these uh, random nodes. So if you find a, a vector flow 2, which is basically uh, you need to uh, you need to have the same type it will return to. So if we go down here and you remember, you, this is a vector 2 type and this was as well, so we need to return it on a uh, vector flow to uh, node. So uh, you can see this has taken full effect. You have a uh, the patterns are spread out evenly, not evenly, but unevenly. <laughs> I mean, uh, you may have noticed some nodes in su in Substance Designer have some adjustable parameters on them. If you want to make these adjustable. Uh, on your node you have to uh, expose them through a uh, parameter which you make uh, uh, on your graph and I would I know I would need uh, a float one for the length and a float one for the width and uh, identifier is the parameter which you will see uh, appear uh, or the name of it you will see appear within your uh, project file and the label is anything outside of it so uh, if you import the node when you're done with it and you import it into a project the label is uh, the name of the parameter you will see so you should name it something people will understand so uh, go back into the the quadrant here and uh, let's click uh, let's make an empty function and enter it and uh, let's get the variables we can get float so we get a list of all the float uh, parameters or values variables that we've made copy this find a width and we need to return these to a vector float uh, to type so just pick that connect these and right click set as output node and now uh, these values will return through the function back into the quadrant and uh, place the values there. So if we go back into the graph, we can now adjust the values here. And uh, these are set up wrong, so we can go back and flip these. And uh, now if we... I made... <laughs> I call this the same name. But this is supposed to be the length. Uh, length. Length. And uh, this is supposed to be the width. So, um, let's increase this and clamp it so you can't increase it past. Uh, let's see how it looks at 4. Yeah, let's stop it at 3 and clamp it so the, the user cannot increase it past 3 and past 0 0.01. And set the default to, uh, I think 2 is fine. And do the same for the width. Uh, set the default to uh, 0 0.5, it's fine. And uh, maybe we, should can, we can increase the iteration a bit to make it more uh, dense. And now it starts to look uh, starts not bad. So uh, let's call let's call this something. And uh, there's another very important step left to do, and that is to go into the graph uh, attributes and uh, name it something reasonable. And uh, these parameters are really are really important because it's how um, substance will. Uh, place them within the filters so um, 
if we uh, you need to click this button to get this but if you mark a filter here and uh, you click this button you will basically see uh, how it finds its uh, nodes so if we uh, look at here it finds all uh, nodes which has the tag equal to noise so if you if you want to make our uh, uh, node up here within this list we have to uh, write noise here you can also make your own uh, filters if you want to so you can choose a folder here and click the plus sign and you will make a, your uh, own filter and you can write in whatever you want here so if you only want your personal notes to appear in a certain filter you can easily do this but I uh, think I'll just have it appear in the noise and uh, you can write your own name uh, here you should uh, writing <laughs> write in here as well because this if uh, you don't write anything into the labels here it will use the identifier name as well as instead so um, I like to keep things clean so I write a capital S in start so because any other any other note has a capital uh, letter at start you can write in your name and your website for instance so people know how to find you if they need something from you and that's basically it we can now uh, one thing you should do first is go into preferences and um, into uh, projects and go to the bottom and you can make your own uh, library folder and uh, the nice thing about this is that uh, if you want to make a backup of your own personal notes later you can just uh, go to this folder and you can find all your uh, custom made notes here so um, that's basically it uh, but that's the f so if you make that a library folder uh, substance will look into that folder for uh, any new notes you can import so save your uh, project to a uh, place you would like and uh, we, uh, click the publish button and uh, place the file within the library folder that you made so Substance will look for the file there and uh, click OK and within 5 seconds the new node should appear there it is so uh, we can make a uh, new substance project to test this out so if I drag this in and uh, you can see all the parameters that we exposed are available here to adjust and that's uh, basically what a noise map is